<clears throat> okay, guys, let's uh, let's do our binary count, our binary counting later today. Let's finish this thing up. So, let's see. You should have your project open, obviously. Um, your code can be open. We're going to create a uh, a new game object. Okay. Uh, matter of fact, I think what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go to this game object we did with that script attached. Uh, I'm going to rename this to uh, data conversions. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to create a new game object. And this is going to be our binary calculator. Okay. And I'm going to attach a new script to the binary count, uh, calculator uh, component. Well, what are we going to call it, though? Well, that's here in, uh, in this document. This is, let's see. Yeah, this is uh, step four. Okay, so this this beginning stuff, uh, if you, you know, we've talked a lot about binary numbers. We even learned how to uh, convert them by just dividing by two and recognizing quotients and remainders. Okay, and so this is just a review of binary. I think you guys know all this stuff, so we could probably just go down here to step four. There's going to be some practice work to do uh, after you make your calculators to make sure they are uh, converting correctly. So really step four is uh, we we'll open up our binary calculator project and create a new script called binary conversion and add this script to a new game object, okay? Uh, set the game object with the previous data conversion script to inactive. Well, we don't need to set it to inactive. Well, I, if we don't want to run it every time, I guess we do need to set it to uh, inactive. Uh, so that's pretty easy to do. So let's let's do that. That way we can only focus on this data conversion. So to do that, here's our binary calculator. We're going to add a new script. Uh, let's add a new script. Let's call it, what does it say? Uh, not data conversion, binary conversion. Okay, sorry. Did I do this again? Let's add a new script called binary conversion. Conversion, okay. All right, so there's a new script. So if we want to make this other script inactive on uh, data conversions, uh, all we got to do is um, uh, remove the component. Let's just remove it, okay? It's still there. It's right there, okay? But uh, it's removed, okay? So over here, let's see. I just created a new script. Unfortunately, it's an asset, so I'm just going to bring it to the scripts folder. So uh, basically, the one in data conversions, we took it off, so it's inactive, okay? But the binary conversion one is right there, so let's just open this up. As you can see, it opens up a brand new uh, script for us. Uh, again, we're going to remove the update function and create a new function called int to binary, okay, with a parameter to take in like an int, uh, take in as an int, okay. So we don't need the update function. Let's just uh, get rid of this stuff, okay. All right. Uh, we're going to create a new function, new function, okay. Uh, this function, we can create it right above here. Okay, it's going to be called um, <clears throat> int to binary. So it kind of looks like this. Whenever we create a new function, we have the void. Okay, kind of like this right here. You can just copy and paste void int to binary. I'm just going to copy this. Void int to binary. Okay, and then this is a new function. Just like the functions we made um, for, oh, I don't know, uh, collisions and things like that, we're creating our own function called int to binary, okay? Uh, and it takes in an integer, and we'll call it my int, okay? So this, let me just copy some of this code. This is a string sequence, a string sequence. So we have a variable called sequence. It's empty, okay? So we're declaring this variable sequence, and we're initializing it to be something that is empty, okay? Uh, and then we have... Uh, Another variable called remainder, which is an int. Now, remainder, remember when we did the math yesterday, the remainders backwards were, in fact, the binary numbers. So we're going to do a similar method, okay, where we get the remainders, okay? All right, so we're going to use a loop here. While 
while the remainder is bigger than zero. Okay, what are we gonna do? While the remainder is bigger than zero, well, we're gonna create a variable uh, called remains, which equals this remainder. This percent sign is modular arithmetic, okay? What it means is it, uh, it whatever this number is, it's, you know, it's how many times does two go into it, okay? And what it returns is the remainder. So remains is going to be the remainder. This is called uh, modular arithmetic, okay? So it's doing what we did yesterday when we divided all those quotients by two and we found a remainder. Uh, this remainder mod two, that's how we say that, remainder mod two, is collecting those remainders, okay? So that's what that's happening there. Okay, and then uh, we'll just say remainder. Uh, we've seen plus equals before. Well, this is division equals. So where uh, the remainder is being divided by two, it's being increased by division by two. Okay, all right. So it's not totally necessary you understand all this, but it is the math we did yesterday. Okay, and then we're nesting inside there if this remains. Okay, in other words, uh, the, uh, the remainders, so if remains is bigger than zero, okay, we are going to take our sequence and increase it by one, a one, okay? Uh, otherwise, else, okay, else, otherwise, uh, we're going to give it a zero. Okay, All right, so it's going to be a 1 or a 0, All right? The remainder is going to be a 1 or a 0, okay? All right, and uh, that pretty much uh, closes closes this, uh, this loop. That's the end of the loop. So I'm just going to make a little comment here. And, oops, what the... Okay, in loop. Okay. And then, let's see. I'm going to take this string result here. Okay. String result is empty. Okay. And then uh, what we need to do is we need to do this. I'm going to copy these comments here. Okay. The sequence is currently in reverse order, so this will flip it to the correct sequence. Remember how we had to go backwards? Okay, so that's what this next uh, part of this function is going to do. It's going to make it go backwards. So we're, again, we're going to use a loop, okay? So here's our for loop. So uh, in a loop, okay, let's get it ready here. Uh, we start off where we want to count. With an, by making an integer called i, and we're setting equal to the length of the sequence we just created, minus 1. The minus 1 is because, um, you know, just like in digits, if we have 10 digits, there's 0 through 9, right? So if we want to uh, correctly count these digits, we've got to take into a fact that everything begins with 0. So... Um, the length is 10 digits, however, we want to be able to grab the ninth, the number 9, right, the ninth, uh, the ninth digit, which means we need to, for those 10 digits, we need to take 10 minus 1, which is 9. So this sets it to the correct length uh, of 9, okay? And then we, uh, our i is going to, uh, this loop is going to keep going until i is bigger than or equal to 0, and then we are going backwards. Uh, I minus minus. So every time this loop runs, uh, we are going backwards from the tenth down to the ninth, down to the eighth, down to the seventh, down to the sixth. However uh, big the digit is, we're going backwards through it. Backwards. Why backwards? Because we got to uh, take these numbers that we just created uh, above and uh, uh, spit them back backwards, right? In reverse. So it's not totally necessary you understand the code. But uh, we'll explain it more on Monday. Okay. So, uh, result is increasing by the sequence. The sequence uh, for each letter. Okay. For each um, 0 or 1. Okay. 
So it's making that sequence right there. Okay. And then we want to print out, we want to print out the result. So here's a way to print out the result. Debug.log uh, my int plus equals plus results. Okay, so um, this is pretty much the function. This function right here, this is the end of it. So here's, right, starts up here. This is called int to binary. This is the function that is going to, uh, it's going to create, create our, uh, our, uh, our, calculator okay so um, I'm just gonna put a comment here this is the end of the loop uh, we're just kind of looking at loops now so uh, I want to explain this loop in more detail on Monday okay but for right now uh, we'll type it in and then we'll do a line-by-line -line analysis on Monday okay loops are very important they're the core of computer science okay it's uh, referred to as iteration uh, iteration on the uh, AP exam and we need to be uh, understanding this, okay? So if we go down here to part B, uh, it says to execute this function, you should call it within the start function and pass in a number you wanna convert, okay? So we can just do this. this we call it into binary. We're gonna pass in 74 and see what it spits out, okay? So this is calling our function. We're passing in 74. So what happens is um, 74 goes into here. And everywhere you see my int, there's a 74 there. Okay. Okay. And so um, there's a 74 there. Okay. And while 74 is bigger than 0, so uh, remainder is now at 74. And while 74 is bigger than 0, this loop is going to happen. Okay, it's going to keep dividing it by 2, right? And it's going to keep track of the quotient and the remainder. Okay? In other words, a series of 1 or zeros, just like we did by hand yesterday. Okay? So it's going to do that until, uh, until this remainder or until the quotient right, is 0. Remember, we stop when the quotient is 0. Okay, so it's going to do that until the quotient is 0. So you can think of the remainder as the quotient and remains as the as the real remainder, the one or zero, okay? Uh, I probably would have named this quotient, but uh, it's okay. All right, that loop ends. And so uh, basically what happens is, uh, uh, you know, this thing has the string result, okay, result, okay, is basically that series of zeros and ones, okay? All right. Uh, so, and then it, then it has to, it has to take the result, has to take the result, right? And it has to go backwards through it uh, and print out the ones and zeros in reverse order so we get that, uh, the result as expected, okay? So it does all that, and then, uh, you know, so when we pass this in, it's going to display what the result is. Let's see, let's just test this right now. I'm going to save it. Let's just test it and see how it works. I'm going to go over here, Okay. All right, uh, I'm just going to run. Let's run this. Let's go to the console. I'll look at what I got. Okay, I got uh, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. Uh, that's supposed to be 74. Uh, we can check it. We can check it. Uh, you can go look at your flippy do. Okay, uh, flippy do. So let me get a little flippy do here. Go look at my flippy do. Okay. This is, uh, right here let's check it okay so one zero zero one zero zero one oops this is the I should go from the other way zero one zero one right zero one zero one zero one okay and then zero zero one zero zero one what do you know it worked 74 okay so uh, this little program did the exact math we did yesterday in class, okay? And it got you uh, this conversion. If I want to convert another number into binary, I would just change it right here, and it would convert to binary, okay? Now let's, uh, let's uh, now that we've converted integers into binary, the next step, step is to convert binary to integers, okay? So we're not done with this, okay? So um, you're going to create a new function called binary to int that takes in a string as a parameter okay so uh, what I'm going to do here remember this is the void start 
we're going to create a new function. This is one function we made. Okay, so here's the end of it. Okay, so I'm going to make another function right underneath it called void. We'll talk about what this all means. And here's where I'm going to put this new function, binary to int. Okay, binary to int. Okay, and so what does it do? It has a variable called int result. It has uh, int, another variable called int n set to zero. Both of those are initialized to zero. We have a loop. Okay, and again, we'll explain these loops in more detail on Monday. But it's a loop. Again, it's starting out. Uh, it's starting out at the end of the. It's taking the count of the sequence. Okay, and it's. Um, it's subtracting one because remember everything starts with zero. We got to subtract one, and again it's going backwards. Okay, we, we got to go backwards through the numbers because uh, that's the way uh, these, the relationship is. If we remember from yesterday, okay. So if we get a one in the sequence, whatever that sequence of ones and zeros are, then uh, what we're going to do, right? Instead of dividing by two, we got to do some multiplication and so right here, uh, we're increasing. Uh, the result is increasing. Okay, uh, what we call math f dot pow. In other words, uh, we're multiplying by a power of two. Okay, we're multiplying by a power of two because uh, we have to multiply now instead of divide. Okay, and then uh, we are going to right here, at the end of this loop, we're going to increase in. Okay, and plus plus, okay, and then uh, we can just copy uh, this debug.log after the loop. I'm going to put a little comment here. This is the uh, end of loop, okay. Make sure that debug.log uh, message goes at the end of the loop, okay. And then like before, uh, we could call this function from the start function. Okay, here's what we got for 74, right? Let's see if we can convert uh, the binary number back to 74. Let's see if that works. Okay, so there it is right there, binary int. Here's the sequence. Okay, again, what's happening? It's taking this sequence, right? This 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. It's passing it into this function right here, sequence. So sequence is now that uh, string of numbers, okay? It has uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight numbers, right? So this number at the end is not the eighth number. It's not the eighth index. In other words, it's the seventh index. So uh, it passes this into here, creates two variables initially, sets them to zero these are global to the function local to the function i should say okay and this sequence is the eight numbers however the last index is seven okay so that's why we subtract one okay it's going to uh basically it's going to start at the last it's going to start at the last index which is the seventh index which is this zero right there it's going to start there okay and then uh, it's going to this function is going to keep going until i is bigger than or equal to zero. In other words, we're going to decrease i every time. So at first it's seven, the next it's six, then five, then four, then three, then two, then one, then boom, this loop will stop. Okay. In other words, we're going backwards through this sequence. Dun, 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 dun. And for every number here, for every number in that se uh, sequence, okay, we are. Um, <clears throat> If it's a one, right? If we get a one in there, in other words, um, uh, if the remainder was one in that number, we are taking uh, the result and increasing it uh, by a power of two. We're doing it to the power of two, okay? And then where uh, n is increasing, okay? And then that's the end of loop. So um, we'll go over this a little bit more and then uh, we should get the number back. Let's try running this. Let's save this. Let's try running it and see if we get the right number back. Let's see what happens here. Okay. There we go. All right. Look at that. 
So there was 74 converted to a binary, and there's a binary converted back to 74. Okay, so great little program here. Uh, this is a good example of the mathematics we did and uh, how we can relate that to a computer. Uh, we'll go over these loops and what they mean a little bit more, but for, day, for today, just make sure you get this program working, okay? Because we can use this to better understand loops. All right, guys, that's the end. Have a good day. Uh, get this program working. We'll see you later.